Bokitov covering mine, Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And of course, we turn our attention to Israel this morning. Uh, different things that have been going on, of course, breaking just now. There has been an Israeli drone that has been downed inside of Lebanon. Uh, the drone was carrying four missiles on board. Uh, there's still no word as to how the drone went down. Was it a malfunction? Was it shot down? Not really sure. We know, though, that the Israeli government only moments later sent another drone in that actually targeted their own drone on the ground. This is also, uh, uh, of course, the Jerusalem Post is the one that reported about the downing of the, or the drone going down. And uh, I'll heed news in English reports here after an Israeli spy drone crashed over southern Lebanese uh, area between Barashit and Beit Yahon. <clears throat> Without knowing yet the reason behind its crash, another Israeli spy drone targeted it with a guided missile and destroyed it. Uh, you can see, though, I don't know how well we can see this here. Yeah, you can see on here, we do have missiles that, as uh, was reported by Lebanon, that it was carrying indeed missiles on board this spy drone there. <clears throat> I'm sure the Israelis did not want... Uh, the enemy to find out exactly what type of intelligence or how the drone is made so that that does not fall into enemy hands there. Uh, as you can see here in the uh, picture posted on Jerusalem Post, this is a uh, Hermes uh, uh, 450 and the 900 series drones. That's the type of drone that actually went down uh, over Lebanon. Uh, we'll kind of be following that later today, see what else is going on. Uh, we have another story that we were looking at the other day. We did not report it yesterday. I wanted to do a little bit more digging before reporting this because it's a very sensitive issue. Uh, and I'd like to start first with the State Department, where there were uh, the, the, the big march that they do in Gaza uh, took place yesterday. There are reported 12 uh, fatalities on the uh, Gaza side of the border there, the uh, people that were shot by Israeli snipers. Israel had warned that they were going to deploy snipers on the border there. Uh, they had warned that they would use live ammunition if they felt like that the, the fence would be, the border fence would be compromised. Now what's troubling to me is that the State Department, uh, this was approached at the State Department uh, and it's very, the reason why I say it's troubling is because the man warned that this could turn into a bloodbath and the State Department really kind of scolded the guy. Uh, I forget the name of the journalist that asked the question. I've seen him many times before on the State Department. I want to play this segment for you so you can hear this for yourself and how uh, Miss Heather responds to him. And then in light of the fact of what he says that this could turn out to be actually happens. Listen into the broadcast here. Uh, I'm going to try to find it here. He says he was misquoted in various reports stemming from an interview that was published today. The United States is not seeking to replace Mahmoud Abbas. It is for the Palestinian people to choose its, its leadership. So I think he was clear in his response to that. Here comes the question. You, know, you guys aid the Palestinian Authority. It seems that the Palestinian leadership has not been able to, to, to sort of deliver. That, that, is, up, that, that is up for the Palestinian people to decide. And one, one uh, other question. Tomorrow there are going to be marches. They are called the return marches to celebrate okay. uh, land day. The Israelis have deployed something like 100 snipers uh, around Gaza. There's likely to be a bloodbath. Are you uh, calling on the Israelis to refrain from the use of excessive force? I, I, would, I the, would call on you to not use that kind of language. <laughs> so what language? That language. It sounds like you're you're calling for that yourself. Look, I'm not calling for that okay. myself. I'm saying that okay. people are <clears throat> maybe 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 marching in the tens of thousands. Mm -hmm. The Israelis are saying that. They have deployed, I'm not saying that, they're saying that they have deployed snipers and so on. This is likely to, to result in bloodshed. Uh, do you call on them to refrain from using excessive force? I, I certainly hope you're wrong. Uh, I hope we don't wrong. like, we don't like to hear excessive language in conjunction with an area that is so sensitive. Right. Um, Israel you know, has certainly put on uh, heightened security alerts right. as a result. You know, we hope the measures that they choose to take and to be implemented will minimize the impact on the ability of people 
uh, to cross in and out of Gaza, for example. Uh, overall, we believe that Israel <laughs> has the right to defend itself, but we uh, recognize that people have a right to be out and uh, be out in the fashion that you had mentioned. But we, thought, but we and, hope things remain calm. And, and lastly, last, yeah. last, yeah. please, please, and lastly, there are uh, about 1,500 Christians in Gaza. Yeah. Some of them would like to go to the Church of Holy Sepulchre. The Israelis have denied them that. Would you call on Israel to allow Gaza Christians to go and, and celebrate the I, I would just say that we hope that they will do this and they will implement this in a way that would minimize impact. Now, the point that I wanted to <clears throat> really emphasize here is that Ms. Heather actually uh, scolds uh, the, the journalist asking the, the way he uh, addressed the question that it could likely be a bloodbath. Uh, and, you know, <clears throat> she gets on to him for using the verbiage that he uses. And, and sadly enough, and I agree, I, I support Israel's rights to defend itself uh, from uh, enemy, from uh, an invasion in the country there, but this was unarmed protest to begin with, and we saw exactly what this journalist was concerned about. Uh, it ended up being a bloodbath. Twelve people were killed. It says here, photos of tens of thousands march on Gaza border, Israeli troops open fire, and, you know... <laughs> I realize there's two sides to a story, and this is one reason why before we reported on this, we wanted to look at this a little bit deeper, um, but we don't see, in any of the video footage that we have examined, we don't see armed Palestinians. Now, I, I will say, you do see large numbers, I mean, thousands of Palestinians coming to the border, and... In my opinion, the only way that Israel should have considered uh, deadly force is if the fence itself was being breached. But that's not the case. Uh, look at this situation right here. This man's just running for his life. He's being shot at. You can see the, the rounds as they were striking the ground. Uh, a couple others go out to help him. See, you can see the, the dirt popping up from the bullets and stuff. And then finally, one of the guys, he's going to get hit. They took him out. For what? What weapon did he have? What fence was he trying to cross? You know, I mean, <clears throat> this is where the trouble comes in. Is, you know, Israel has this right. right now, if you look in the back of the video here, let me just see if I can. <laughs> Get this video picked up big enough here so you can see this on your screen. The fence is way back there in the background. All right? So the protesters are not near it. They were using drones to fire tear gas. You know, okay, I have no problem with the tear gas whatsoever. You're trying to disperse the crowd. You don't want them close to the Israeli border, border fence there. But they're not crossing the border fence. And... There's multiple videos out here where they're not near the fence, they're not carrying weapons, and they're just being picked off. I mean, that's a shame on our people that we would do something like this. You know, I, I realize there's a lot of problems with Hamas inside of Gaza. We do see a lot of issues there. We see rockets being lobbed into Israel on a regular basis. That's a major issue as well. Uh, and we know that there was a protest coming. We know that there was a march coming. And I know that there is heightened tensions for Israel. Uh, what if they decide to storm the fence? What if they decide to cross the fence? You know, yes, that's a problem. I realize that. But when they're on the inside of the fence, <clears throat> and in a case like this here, these men are not running to the fence. They're running away. And they're being shot anyway. Uh, that's troubling. <clears throat> you know, it's very troubling to me because hu humans are human beings, period. And we can't just use humans for target practice because you don't agree with their uh, ideology or their way of thinking. And I know <clears throat> for a fact things like this have gone on in Israel in the past. Uh, I had a good friend of mine, his name was Iran. Uh, his family were uh, the Jews that he came from Iran to Israel to live in Israel. He lived in Beersheba. His family lived in Beersheba. 
very close friend of mine. We were actually roommates there for a while in 2004 when I lived in Israel. And uh, he had been injured in the army and he shared with me uh, some very intimate details of things that he had done while he was in the army, things he was ashamed of now uh, as time had gone by. But he spoke about how that he himself had killed Palestinians. And it was just, he said, for target practice. And he was living with this and it troubled him. You know, the thing is, friends, we can't, we, we, you know, we're, the Jewish people were to be a light of the nation, a light of the world. How can we be a light like this? This is a shame. And here we are in Passover season. It is a shame upon us. Now, as I said, there are two sides of the story. And we know that the Israeli government warned that they would have armed snipers out there, a hundred snipers. And, but, you know, here we are at the State Department, and the State Department giving this guy a hard way to go and saying, well, I hope it doesn't end up like that. But she's like, are you, you're calling on it. No, he's not calling on it. The only thing he's asking is for the State Department to at least, or for the, for the President of the United States to, to say to Israel, look, <laughs> you know, use a little bit of restraint. Don't just start shooting at the people. If they're trying to tear the fence down itself, you know, if they're trying to cross over into Israel, all right? You know, that's kind of like the old saying in America, if the guy's breaking into your house, you don't shoot him when he's outside the house. You know, they need to be inside the house. Your life needs to be in danger. Then it is self-defense. But this is, you know, very troubling indeed. And again, I, I support my people in defending themselves. I support, I understand uh, the, the, the Hamas firing rockets into Israel, targeting civilians on a regular basis. And there are many times that Israel does nothing in retaliation for that. But then when they do, they definitely go all out. They don't play around. You know, and I understand that. But I also realize that these people are imprisoned in this one little section. And even as the uh, man said, there's 1,500 Christians that live inside of uh, Gaza that would like to be able to go uh, to the Christian sites near Jerusalem for the Easter holidays there. Uh, you know, and, and I don't know the answer to that, but uh, it's very troubling indeed. And uh, again, I'm very saddened to see that there has been this situation happen uh, on the Gaza border, the Israeli border there. You know, and I, like I said, I can't stress enough. I realize there's issues on both sides of the fence there, and it's very troubling. Um, very troubling indeed. But images like this, and like I said, I've seen many of them already uh, that have come out where people have been shot, kids have been shot. Uh, and, and now, granted, you know, in this case here, you know, the crowds that came there to the border fence are in the tens of thousands of people that were marching, uh, you know, it, you know, it's not going to go well. It's not going to go well. Sometimes I cannot help but wonder if there's not a deep state agenda uh, to want an attack to come on Israel. Uh, who's going to pay the price? It's going to be the civilians of Israel that pay the price ultimately. You know, God wanted us to live in peace with our neighbors as much as we possibly could. And this is definitely no way bringing about peace. Uh, also, I wanted to mention one other story here. This uh, young lady pictured in the video here on Sputnik News. She is a Kurdish combat woman fighter, 26 years old. She was a British uh, girl uh, who actually came to fight with the Kurds. She was killed by Turkish forces when the uh, siege on Afrin began, or Afrin. And a uh, very sad situation there. But uh, the, the Kurdish fighters have really come to the forefront in being one of the most valiant forces uh, ever put together in this uh, combat against ISIS, uh, as well as the other invading forces inside of Syria. Uh, and these valiant women that have been fighting there, uh, even they say that ISIS feared them, of course, because they believed that if a woman killed a soldier, it was a disgrace uh, for that to happen. 
um, but uh, you know very very I've always been very uh, how would I put it how would, uh, it is nice to see I guess you could say that these women are willing to defend their right of freedom especially in a world where women's rights are trampled upon like never before. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We will be loading part two of the interview with uh, uh, Dr. Pigeon. Uh, if you do want to see it before we load it here on Israeli News Live live stream, the entire broadcast aired there uh, two days ago. You could see it before we try to load it here, but we will try to get part two up sometime later today. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.